Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar where we will explore why aligning sales and service is a key growth driver and why it's sometimes quite challenging to achieve. We'll also look at uh, the role your Super of a CRM solution can play in getting you there. My name is Jeanette and I work with the product marketing team here at SuperOffice. Uh, I will be your host today and with me I have um, Paul Vestre, which is an experienced sales manager uh, with Cloud Connection, who have lived the challenges and solutions of our topic of today. And then we also have Camilla Buman, uh, who in addition to years of sales experience, has for the past 10 years looked for, at this topic from a total profitability point of view as the managing director of SuperOffice Norway. Welcome guys. Thank you. Thank you. Looking forward to it. So let's get right into the agenda. So we will start by discussing uh, the customer journey and why more than ever customer service is not just a team uh, or the service team's job. It's your whole company's responsibility. We'll also get into the five main challenges that happen when sales and service teams are not aligned. And we will also see how we can harness the power of alignment by sharing information about um, customers across the company. And here we can also discuss what that looks like in your CRM. Uh, and we also include a little demo. And last but not least, you get the steps to achieve the sales and service alignment so you can start advocating uh, for it uh, in your company. So these days, everyone is talking about growth, uh, but it's not just about getting bigger and making uh, quick profits. Sustainable growth means growing steadily and consistently in the long run. So a key strategy to achieve sustainable long-term long growth is not only to focus on securing new customers and sales, but to provide these good enough experiences that they turn into loyal customers who buys again and again from you. And this is often referred to as the sustainable growth formula and relates to the importance of taking care of the customer, the entire customer journey with your company. And that means also not only being great at securing sales, but also depends upon what everyone else does to provide customer experiences and customer service. So sales teams cannot afford to be transactional. They have to focus on building a connection and a relationship with the customers. And because if you manage to turn uh, customers into happy customers, they are more likely to buy from you and talk about you to their peers, resulting in more business. So simple and yet so challenging. And but it's a great practice to oh, sorry, it's a great place to start um, is to identify and map those customer experiences uh, that they have with your company at every touch point from your website to marketing communications to after sales and services. And this is often referred to as your customer journey. Mm -hmm. uh, McKinsey explains this customer journey as the sum of the many touch points, interactions and experiences your customers have with you, whether they become a customer or not. And you can see this in this example, um, we can visualize the many moments of interactions with you from visiting your website, interacting with your marketing communications, to your sales process and meets your delivery and after sales services. And many companies are great at creating the sustainable growth, uh, or the companies that are great at this, uh, they create sustainable growth and excel in all aspects of this journey. And one thing is clear is that the customer is the same whether we engage with them as prospects during a sales process or taking care of them after they have bought from us. And as we know from experience that there are some hurdles in getting to this alignment across that journey. So I want to ask you, uh, what are your reasons um, or what are the reasons you see that it might be difficult for companies to create a great customer experience throughout this journey? Camilla? <clears throat> yeah, I, I, my experience is that everyone is good at some parts of this journey. They have something they do better than competitors, something that... Uh, they truly master. And I think most companies also have uh, weaknesses when it comes to uh, to the entire uh, customer experience. So 
I'd say that the biggest challenge is to look at this as a whole, to be able to see all the activities that a potential and existing customer go, goes to, through and to um, make sure that things don't uh, fall between uh, two different departments, that, it's, it, that it feels as if you're talking to the same company when you talk to the salesperson and the personal support and, and so forth. So to me, it's not necessarily one area where everyone needs to, to focus. It's, it's the whole or the flow, that, how it feels to be a customer. I mean, we all know how extremely irritating it is when when uh, you you get poor service after you've given them your money or uh, or um, if we don't deliver on what the sales has, has promised and so forth. So it's the entire journey. Yeah, I totally agree, Camilla. And from my experience, also the different departments sometimes have their specialized tools for the sales process from the service uh, service process or the marketing process. And, and that's also um, uh, stopping the interaction between departments, uh, mm -hmm. which leads to what you were just uh, referred to. Yeah. So this sort of highlights, I think, the, the topic of today to how do you how do you align the sales and, and service? And it has to do with looking at this entire relationship or journey in, in one as picture. Yeah, yeah, as a whole. Yeah. And what we see from meeting thousands of companies and after decades of experience is that there are some common areas uh, for improvements. And one of the main situations where we see a broken customer journey is when the company treats uh, the customer service as an afterthought or a nice to have uh, in addition to sales. And we think that customer service is not just an or department, it's, it should be everyone's job from um, support to customer service, marketing, uh, consultants, finance, and sales. They should all be concerned about uh, how the customer perceives um, or the experience they get. Mm -hmm. So if you uh, care about the customer experience of your customer, you need to consider uh, that everyone in your company usually communicates with your customer at some point. So instead of asking finance for an invoice copy by email, which then gets lost in someone's inbox, um, or forwarded to the wrong person, um, and you need to kind of call or follow up and ask for updates. Um, instead, we can centralize all of this information uh, and communication regarding the customer in one system. And by centralizing communication uh, and giving every person on the company the same access to purchases, it can be sales processes, uh, requests, you can make sure that every touch point uh, your customer can uh, on or every touch point, your customers can have the same level of experience. Mm -hmm. So providing a smooth customer journey not only help prevent you from losing customers, but it can actually become a source of competitive advantage for your customers. So this is the perfect scenario, the perfect destination. But the road and, to... and then also just to add, so that it's so yeah. much more powerful to compete on this area rather than on price, where all you all you can do is discount. So if you, if you manage to do this, it's, it's so valuable for, for a company. That's true. And this is what we call like the perfect scenario, the perfect destination, but uh, how do we get there? This could be a bit bumpy. So, um, and it usually starts with this alignment if the servant sale or service and sales is not on the same page. So what are the typical challenges that arise um, as a consequence if sales and services are not aligned? And a then, lot. A lot, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then I'm giving the word to you because you have uh, some good, um, good arguments and some good points uh, for these challenges. Cool. Okay, yeah. so challenge number one. Teams are stressed out, they feel overwhelmed. Um, this probably has to do with, with what uh, Jeanette touched on earlier. You don't have the insight, you don't have all the information in one system. Maybe it lives in, in silos, uh, in different departments. Uh, so, so you lack the, uh, the overview. Um, is this something, I mean, uh, as a sales manager of Cloud Connection, one of the biggest CRM uh, uh, vendors or, or uh, partners in, in Norway, Paul. Do you see this a lot? 
Yeah, I recognize this a lot, and I think we could uh, relate to that feeling ourselves because uh, we have different departments, and uh, we need to sort of get the whole picture of the workload and the tasks uh, on these customers. And often, uh, employees and also customers tend to get uh, paralyzed if they don't have the control of over the so-called overwhelmed amount of uh, tasks they are going to to, to solve. But um, I feel also that sometimes uh, you prioritize also uh, not in the best way because you don't have the complete overview. And mm -hmm. uh, what feels like really important to you and one customer um, is also related to your personal prioritizing and not the, the system that would give you to prioritize this correctly. Uh, due to the customer plan or, or, or something like that. But, but I think that the most and the ground uh, basic re reason for this happening is the lack of control and overview uh, because you don't really know what the workload is. So uh, you feel overwhelmed because you don't have the overview and thing comes in from the from a colleague all the time. You don't really have the overview and the cues and it's overwhelming. I think that's the feeling we're all familiar with. Yeah, and and also <clears throat> if you don't have the overview or the insights, it's um, it's easy to treat everyone the same. And one could argue that uh, well, it should be justice for all. But if you have a really big customer, it's more important for you to handle that fast. Yeah, it is, and. And uh, often it's not really the important stuff that get prioritized because it, the, it's the customer that's uh, screened the highest, <laughs> which are prioritized uh, and not really what's the most mm. important. So uh, we are all people and uh, we react on feelings and uh, emotions. And when you get yelled at at the phone, everything, uh, we need to do this, uh, you get uh, you get moved by that and uh, that will affect your prioritizing uh, of the tasks. Yeah. And also we, we see with a lot of customers that this, this actually influences the employee satisfaction as well. So when, when you don't feel that you have control in your everyday uh, work and you always, you're just uh, running in the, in the hamster wheel, uh, then it's, it's difficult to feel satisfied with, uh, with your work. And having a good solution here, you can also have automatic escalations so that you make sure you don't uh, forget. So. We see that this uh, this helps both, of course, the level of service you're able to to give to uh, customers, but also the uh, employee satisfaction. If if you have a solution, I totally agree. And uh, the lack of having control of these elements also will lead to people uh, getting sick and uh, stressed out. Yeah, I agree. So uh, there's a kind of a, the ball keeps rolling if they're all overwhelmed and distressed and the satisfaction is low. Mm. The next challenge, if the customers can't get a hold of you easily. Yeah, this is, uh, this is interesting because this is one of two reasons why customers churn. Because 68% of the customers you lose, you lose because they feel you don't care about them. And one part of, of uh, that you don't care about them is that they can't get hold of you. So this is actually extremely important, much more important than many of us think. Um, and um, uh, it's um, again, I want I want to ask you, Paul, with uh, the finger on the pulse, uh, how many of us are not doing this optimally today? You think? Well, I think a lot of uh, I think most of us can relate to this challenge. Really, it's like if you call a friend for several times and they never call back, never text you. Mm. Uh, how's your feeling? Uh, I think you feel left out. You know, it doesn't I really matter to the person? Mm -hmm. And it's the same with customers. And and the challenge here, as we see in most companies and with ourselves as well, is if they can't really get hold of the technical support or uh, customer service, what they do is they'll call the salespeople yeah. because uh, the salespeople are always eager to get in touch with the customer and sell something. But 
uh, the customer would then start asking, could you do me this small favor with this technical support, uh, etc. And then we start uh, mixing the roles and the salespeople are doing support and also disturbing the, the customer service team. So yeah. because I have this customer, it's really important, you need to help him now. Uh, and uh, you sort of sneak in the queue. So I think uh, clear roles helps. I think uh, clear expectations about how we will respond to your request uh, gives an expectation that uh, you could deliver on. And it's so easy to call back uh, or just send a message. I'm busy now, I'll get back to you at two o'clock, three o'clock. That's the reason we are also having the receipt a uh, ticket uh, when you send in to, to manage the expectation. So I think the customer needs to feel that you really care and it's so easy to do it. So if you're thinking about your friend and if he calls and you're in the meeting, I'll call you later. Mm. Call later, don't miss yeah. out. And, and also I can relate to the fact that uh, you don't want your salespeople working on the support tasks. You want them to work on sales. Definitely, because yeah. the salespeople are not uh, technical experts, so they will give, give poor advice and the, the experience from the customer will be poor and they will also um, use their time on things that they really shouldn't do. Yeah, exactly. So, so the bottom line here is uh, don't leave it up to, even though you have great uh, people, don't leave it up to each individual to, to deliver good uh, service because uh, they need system support here. Uh, one system where everything uh, is handled and escalated, no matter if uh, you go on holiday or if you're sick. So yeah, make that, sure that you support. Yeah, and I, and I just want to add that uh, and here, uh, Camilla, the salespeople also can play customer service uh, good by managing the expectations. Okay, they are a little bit busy now, but um, I'll make sure that they call you during the day. Don't say they're calling back in an hour because, you know, if you put the expectations too low and you don't deliver on that, hmm. you have a not satisfied customer. So yeah, that's true. Okay, challenge number three. This is also linked to to the sixty eight percent that churn. So the first part was that you don't keep your uh, uh, or that you uh, you can't they can't get hold of you. And the second part part is that you don't keep your uh, promises. Um, so again, it's, it's very tightly linked. And why don't you keep your promises? Well, probably because you don't know or don't remember what was promised. Uh, you've forgotten everything about it because there is no system supporting it. Yeah, I think uh, most people can relate to this one because if you promise to call uh, in two weeks or three weeks, Good luck of remembering that if you don't put it into a system or put it in there. The challenge is really if I promise to call a customer in three weeks and I'm not there, I left the company, I'm sick, I'm not there, uh, the customer still uh, expects the, the follow up in three weeks, mm -hmm. even if I'm not there. So that's the reason for uh, CRM is so important to both documentate and share those uh, tasks uh, because yeah we have a relation uh, people buys from people all know that but uh, when I'm not there the customer really expect somebody else to step up and maintain and um, take care of me as a customer because I'm actually buying from the company yeah absolutely so, so so key words here is transparency, escalation, ownership. Make sure that you have systems set up for that. Yeah. Or Excel. Pardon, Jeanette, what did you say? Don't use post-its or Excel sheets. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> when you have to go to a colleague's uh, PC screen and, and uh, take their post-it notes to find out what to do, then, then you're in trouble. <laughs> so okay. next challenge is then you don't, don't know, know if your customer is happy or not. Yeah, um, <laughs> there's, a, there's a survey from the US, I think it's a few years now, but uh, still the, the findings were quite uh, astonishing. They asked the companies how many of them felt that they delivered excellent customer service. And 80%, 80% of the companies said that we feel we deliver excellent customer service. 
Then they ask their customers and potential customers, how many of you feel that you receive excellent customer service? And eight, eight percent, not 80, but eight percent said that we receive excellent customer service. So there was a massive gap from eight to 80. And this is due to, to the fact that we actually, or many companies don't know if their customers are happy. They don't check after they have submitted the support ticket or asked about an invoice or talked to, uh, to finance or whatever. Did you get the answer you needed? Is there anything else I can do to help you? Are you happy with, uh, with our response? They don't ask them, so they don't know. And they don't do NPS either. So they don't necessarily know if the customer as a whole is happy with the relationship they have with you. And then it's very difficult to improve, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, and I think uh, also it's important to keep in mind that uh, you are only as good as your last interaction with the customer. So uh, this is a really um, a snapshot of what the situation is right now because uh, you could be happy for in for a month ago but uh, today you're unhappy because something that was uh, not handled the way you expected mm -hmm. and therefore it's like uh, a, a continuous struggle or battle to keep up the the service level and make sure that we at all times deliver our best experiences when people are calling our customer services but because Often customer services uh, requests that comes into the customer center is really about needs. They need help. And uh, if you need help, uh, the solution could also be that you need a solution or a product or an app or something like that. And, and uh, from my experience, actually, uh, what really uh, triggers the customer um, experience is if you could give them a solution that really solves the problem. and exceed their expectations um, mm -hmm. and maybe bring something to the to the table that they didn't thought of themselves so so good customer service uh, employees also listen uh, analyze and suggest solutions not just answer the questions and I think here's one of the key that you can't really train enough about because you need to listen to what the customer is saying and Often is, is the question raised in a way that it's not obvious that, uh, that uh, what the uh, answer is. Mm -hmm. So often when I do this kind of calls, what are really trying to achieve here? Uh, what is the really, really the problem? And if you get under that, uh, you probably have a much happier customer at the end of the call than if you just answer the question, it's not possible. So. Uh, I think the customer needs to feel that you really care or, and are interested in finding a solution for him. It's not really about yes or no, it's more about uh, the attitude and the, ex the experience they have when they're talking to you. Mm. Mm. And the final uh, challenge is that, um, as we've touched upon, if, if you don't, if you don't treat your customers and uh, and uh, help your employees do that in a in an easy way you you will lose them you will uh, they will churn they will either reduce the business they do with you or cancel it completely um, and uh, there's uh, it's something that's uh, interesting to uh, to remember it's um, something called the peak end rule it's uh, Kahneman, that, uh, the Nobel Prize receiver, that uh, says that it's not the average of all the interactions that you have with your customers that leaves them with their impression of you. It's the best part of that journey, the peak, and it's the end. So, and then you can say, well, isn't the, the customer journey eternal? Well, then it's, then it's what's quite recent in, in, uh, in your past. So that's what we as humans remember. So um, to avoid this churn and to avoid that customers feel forgotten, then make also sure that you have, that you're better than your competitors at the peak and the end of, of your interactions. Yeah, I think, I think you're completely right. And 
uh, I think is uh, to to sort of relate to this challenge. It's it's quite easy to give an example uh, both on how to make them feel forgotten and not. Uh, you could start the customer services uh, request with, "Who are you? Are you a customer of of, of our company?" <laughs> it's not really a good welcome opening line. I think uh, most people understand that, but also, if you are a little bit more into details, you could also uh, have you been speaking to anybody at our companies? Who did you speak with? All those kind of questions that really you should have control of. The more of those questions, the more the customer feel forgotten and mm -hmm. the, the experience uh, will decline. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, uh, if you like starting the conversations, Hi Camilla, thank you for calling. Uh, how was everything? Uh, I saw you spoke with Espen the, the, the last day. Did everything work out? Mm -hmm. It's a much better approach and without any uh, saying so much, you are giving uh, the customer uh, confidence that you have control and are interested in, in them, them as a customer. So mm -hmm. it's fairly easy, but it's so hard in a busy day. You have a long list of tasks you need to complete and now the customer is calling again. So, it's, But you need to sort of take one step back and in this call, how was this uh, message received on the other end? Mm -hmm. uh, because we are also tend to focus on ourselves and not much on the other side. Mm. So I think this is the main reason for the challenge number four, uh, five and a good customer service solution will give you that over you and that control quite easily. Mm. Also thinks it's good um, in any role of the company kind of to, to think about how the customer or how I can help the yeah. customer have that great experience. Yeah. yeah, I just remember one thing that I I, I think uh, I want to to add because we talked about being available for for customers. That doesn't have to be in person. Yes. It can be that you have a solution where the customer is allowed to help themselves twenty four seven. Yeah. So so that's also part of good service. Finding out what needs to be hands on and what what's. Um, what could be uh, completely digital as long as you have solutions where you make important information available for the customer or you allow them to submit their ticket and to get the receipt after hours so that they don't have to wait until you're back in uh, in the office yeah all parts of good service yes <clears throat> so time and churn and missing out of uh, what happy customer means for new business opportunities are kind of factors that can stop sales from also reaching their full potential. Um, do you want to add some additional thoughts to this? I think we all know how uh, how much easier it is to uh, get existing customers to buy more than to find net new customers. It's such a hard game. Uh, and um, when you take care of your customers, they stay with you longer and they buy more. So it's also from a strictly financial point of view it's it's a very very smart investment to make yeah i just want to add one last thing uh, to this slide and you know uh, reaching out to new customer it's uh, as camilla said uh, hard work uh, all customer service requests are really needs that uh, also is a potential for sales so uh, you need to look at the whole customer journey and and try to pick uh, all the small leads from existing customers so they can f uh, fill the white spaces and and fulfill their needs because they, it's continuously changing and uh, new new needs uh, appear so um, be in touch with your customers at all times uh, so you have a good dialogue and uh, you will uh, catch up with most of the opportunities uh, that uh, will appear also existing happy customers are ambassadors that will give you new customers yeah. so yeah. It's, uh, it's vital for sales. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so um, when customer is a, a source for uh, a co com or a competitive advantage and your secret weapon of success, um, can you share some examples that can exemplify why this is good? Why, how it, does it look like when the, uh, these teams are aligned? Well, it's, it's a bit like uh, Paul touched on, on uh, earlier. It's uh, 
say you're going out in a sales meeting and um, you don't have a system to, to sort of check the 360 uh, view of this customer. So you don't know that they have a couple of support tickets. So you don't make sure that they're resolved. You don't uh, get the answers to the last questions they have. You just go out there and, and try to sell. First of all, you, you look very, um, you don't, you're not perceived as if you're trying to take care of your customer, trying to solve their problems. You just want to sell to them. No one, no one likes that. So it's, um, it's vital to have the insight and to care about the entire customer relationship, not just your part based on your department. Yeah, I think you're totally right. And we are consultative selling, so we are solving challenges. And to give you one uh, short example of how uh, easy this could be, uh, working in the customer service, one request could be, okay, I'm sending out a message to 100 of my customers for, uh, by email, and now I'm being blacklisted. The short answer is, okay, you can't send like 100 emails in, in one mail, you will be blacklisted. That could be the answer, because that's right. But obviously the correct answer is, uh, um, our salespeople working with the marketing module, they would be happy to tell you how you could solve this issue without being blacklisted. So it's more like taking the request and the service request and turn it into a lead to the sales department. But then you need to really listen to what is the, really the challenge for the customer. It's not really that he's been blacklisted. That's our consequence of lack of solution. So it's, it's, it's vital that also the customer services team are tuned in on our uh, product portfolio and what is the common challenges, what is the solution. So they need to train together. Mm, yeah. Have shared information. Yeah. Yeah, because there's, I mean, I, I'm a salesperson. Uh, we all know what it's like to try to chase the leads. It's difficult because uh, you, you have to catch the attention. The timing needs to be right. It needs to be of interest to talk about this now uh, with me, but customers contacting us, they, they already have something that they need to, to solve or, or uh, uh, that they need taken care of. So it's, if you're able to help them, then it's, uh, they are in a much, uh, they're much more receptive to, yeah, yeah. Uh, to your yeah. solutions. Yeah. So not being able to sort of translate what you're hearing into what can I do or what can we as a company deliver to this to this company to to help them improve to help them grow to help them solve this challenge uh, that is uh, losing a lot of opportunities. Yeah, that's quite interesting actually because uh, we recently did a survey uh, which is called European B two B Customer Service Report and uh, many said like. They allowed service teams to sell to customer. Uh, the majority of the companies we surveyed recognized that the customer service team contribute to the overall sales poten uh, potential. Um, and this is by providing good customer experiences, which increases the chances of additional sales. Um, so even more reasons why uh, sales managers need to be concerned with how customer service is handled, right? Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. So, but it does sort of um, make a statement for what we just uh, spoke about. So, I think you're totally right. Yeah, mm. it cannot be an afterthought. It has to be, and it also <clears throat> needs to be a part of the strategy. Mm. So, um, up until now, uh, we've talked about uh, the customer experience uh, and also a lot kind of what's facing the customer. Um, but now we want to see how it can look like uh, from the internal processes of customer service and how that shapes the overall customer experience uh, that we can offer on the outside. Um, and to do this, we need a little help from technology. And more specifically, you need a solution that can help you optimize and streamline your customer service processes. So now we will take a look at uh, a demo in uh, SuperOffice. And for those of you who are already using the CRM uh, module or working with contact management, uh, some of you may be uh, using the service module only if you're working with uh, customer service. 
Uh, but we have uh, different ways of working in Superoffice. Uh, but the kind of main thing is that you get that 360 degree view of the customer and all the interactions. So we will take a look at how we can use uh, contact management, how we can use forms and get leads from the website, how we can then use this um, to work with and handle the requests. And we will do this with using service, which is the ticket management system. And we can categorize the tickets and how we can work with these um, and collaborate um, internally. And just show you the whole suite and how uh, you can take advantage of that. So we'll take a uh, or show you a quick uh, video now. Now that we've discussed the challenges and opportunities faced by our sales and customer service teams, let's dive right in and we'll show you how your Superoffice CRM solution can bridge the gaps and unite all departments, ensuring a seamless customer journey at every touchpoint. Let's begin our CRM journey with a common scenario, a lead generated from your website. Now on the screen, you can see a Superoffice web form that's embedded on this site. So when a potential customer fills out this form, Superoffice instantly auto creates contact data from this interaction. So no more manual data entry or lost leads. Our new leads information is now securely stored in the CRM, but we can do more. The form submission can trigger additional actions or workflows. Now, one example is to schedule an appointment directly in the salesperson's diary. And this means we can track all interactions from that first contact to hopefully closing that deal. But we also want to deliver an exceptional customer experience. And that requires a structured system. That is where we can use Superoffice service. The form submission creates a request. You can then assign this lead a sales category based on your specific criteria. For instance, leads from companies with over 300 employees can be routed to a dedicated team or individual. In the fast-paced world of sales, timely responses are critical. So you can set up deadlines to ensure that leads of this category are flagged for escalation within just one hour. For example, notifying the manager or reassigning it to another team member. Plus, it allows you to add internal comments or notes for context. And this collaborative environment empowers your sales team and ensures everyone has a better overview, reducing stress and improving the customer experience. In a few simple steps, we can turn a web form submission into a structured lead with a clear path for follow-up. And this is how Superoffice CRM streamlines and automates your lead management process. Next up, Let's see how we can handle customer complaints. Imagine you're a salesperson, always on the move, working hard to close deals. Your inbox is often flooded with customer complaints and inquiries. Now, handling these emails can be a real challenge. They get lost in your private inbox, making it difficult to stay organized and provide timely responses. And what's worse, after you forward a customer complaint to the relevant department, you might get follow-up emails from the customer or even phone calls demanding updates. But there's a better way to manage this. With the Superoffice add-in for Outlook and Gmail, you can effortlessly convert customer complaint emails into structured requests right from your inbox. Your customer complaints are no longer scattered. They're organized within Superoffice. You can assign them to the right people for a solution and the customer automatically gets an email assuring them that their issue is in capable hands. What's more, you can also use the favorites function to keep you in the loop. So by marking a request as a favorite, you receive notifications about any updates on the request. And by offering your customers this level of service, you're not just solving problems, you're also building trust and loyalty, all while keeping your inbox organized. Superoffice can also help you uncover opportunities to grow your business. With a quick glance at the dashboard, you can check recent customer activities and requests, allowing you to understand what your customers are talking about. For instance, you notice a trend. Several customers have been asking about after hours support. And armed with this knowledge, you can now proactively reach out to these customers 
and suggest a premium support contract that covers faster response time and after hours assistance. And by offering this tailored solution, you not only enhance customer satisfaction, but also seize new business opportunities. Knowing your customers is also essential for sales success. The CRM allows you to gain insights into customer history, helping you prepare and address past issues or concerns. In this example, we have a selection of customers with contracts that expire soon. In the preview, you notice that a customer had a less than ideal experience in the past. And with this information, you can prepare before the meeting or call. You can address any past issues or concerns, showing the customer that you've been attentive and that you're dedicated to ensuring a positive experience moving forward. And this level of preparation and insight can be the difference between a successful contract renewal and a missed opportunity. So using the CRM system, you can deep dive into the history and past interactions, building strong customer relationships and boost your sales success. Now we all know maintaining customer relationships is crucial. And with SuperOffice, you can create customer feedback loops proactively addressing customer needs. Take customer A, for example, one of your most important customer categories. You can set a rule to follow up with them regularly, maybe every quarter or automatically after a closed deal or a solve request. During these follow-up interactions, you can ask how they experience the service. And if customers suggest something like needing more on-site training, you can offer them the training package to meet their needs. And this not only adds value to their experience, but also boosts sales. And don't forget that you can also tip your colleagues. If another team member should handle the request, they can easily pick up where you left off, checking all interactions and history to continue the follow-up with the customer. Moreover, SuperOffice is super flexible and can be customized to make your work more efficient. Like in this example, where you can quickly create a sales opportunity by clicking a custom button, triggering a macro that automates that process. This means that when a sales opportunity arises, it's easy to capture and start working on it without delay. Now that we've explored how you can handle leads, offer excellent customer service, and gain a deeper understanding of your customers, let's move on to discover how you can get a good overview with dashboards to see everything working together. First, you can easily track your customers with open requests. You can group them by priority, like A, B, or C, based on their importance. This way, you can ensure that high priority requests are quickly addressed maintaining strong customer relationships. Another example we saw earlier was an overview of contracts. And you can easily visualize selections, and in this case of contracts, that are up for renewal this quarter. This ensures that you don't miss any important contract renewals and can continue to provide your services to your valued customers. Lastly, you can keep a close eye on incoming customer feedback. This feedback is a valuable source of insights for improvement and can help you make informed decisions. And by monitoring these key metrics, you have a clear picture of your customer interactions, important tasks, and customer feedback, ensuring you can effectively manage your sales efforts. In summary, SuperOffice CRM unites your teams, driving efficiency and allowing more time for closing deals. This collaboration brings together the entire company to deliver exceptional customer experiences. And happy customers are just satisfied. They drive more revenue for your business, and it's a win-win for you, your colleagues, and most importantly, your customers. So these uh, four ways are just a summary of what we've been discussing so far. Um, and I think it's safe to say that customer service uh, cannot be considered uh, an afterthought. And it needs to be aligned with sales in order to create new growth opportunities for your companies and become a strength. So, but we need to talk about some tangible uh, examples. How can we get started? How can we get this level of alignment in the company or your company? Uh, so what are the next steps? Hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, first of all, I think it's um, 
it's the same as with with CRM. It's uh, it's not really a question about a system, although it's important to have system support. It's much more a question about strategy. Who do you want to be? So when it comes to to the service uh, and sales alignment, then it has to it has to do with the customer journey. So you need to sit down as as uh, management and discuss what should it be like to be a prospect and a customer of us, uh, company A. Um, how do we want to be perceived? Where are our strengths compared to our competitors? Where do we need to do better? Where are our weaknesses that we need to, to sort of improve? Uh, and, and then to have a conscious relationship to, to this customer journey and the customer experience. Um, so that's touching on, on the, the first one, create common goals. Do, do, you, do you actually know when you succeed? Should it be an NPS score? Should it be, uh, or another kind of satisfaction score? Should it be the fact that internally you have complete control of the cases across uh, the departments? Uh, should it be something that you see in the revenue? So what are your sort of goals for, for knowing if, if you're achieving what you want? And then of course, to, to map the journey you have today, but more importantly, to design the one that you want in the future to receive those goals. And um, also maybe, Paul, to make sure that uh, you, you ask the right, the right people, not just the management, but to, to get the feedback from, from the people in the trenches, maybe. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of companies that I have been in, in the, uh, a process with, Often when I go to their web page, I just check contact us and a lot of companies has contact forms on their web pages or info at post at etc. And, and I think a lot of companies don't really acknowledge that they have a role to customer service and, uh, and that it deserves the attention and it deserves really to be taken that serious because taking those kind of requests into a common mailbox uh, which are up to some people to answer sometimes um, it doesn't really give me the good uh, feeling for how these uh, requests are being handled so so it's more like okay what are we really doing uh, ask uh, or yourself what are you really doing regarding customer service and then obviously uh, as you set goals map your journey, uh, what channels should you be present in? Should you be present in contact forms, common mailboxes, chat, uh, what, what channels? Mm -hmm. and, and what kind of teams should handle the different kind of channels? And then start measuring and see, okay, are we really staffed enough to, to meet those kind of requests that we are receiving? Uh, and then review and adjust. So I think this is a really good uh, five point uh, slide that could uh, put some uh, key uh, keystones to work with. Yeah, and uh, just to be, I mean, you challenge us to be a little uh, hands on here, Charlotte. Say that you want to uh, you want to improve the the customer satisfaction. So one of your goals is say it's a net percentage score of of plus twenty or something. Then you map your customer journey and you find that uh, when it comes to um, repairs, uh, you, uh, you tend to drop the ball a little. So then you sit down and you actually design the process. How do you as a customer um, report some, that something is broken? How long should it take before you get a personal answer? Because you'll get an immediate one with a, with a reference number so you know you have your place in the line. But how long until someone contacts you? How should they contact you? Should they do it in person? Should it be on mail? Uh, should it be in the customer center? Uh, how, what are your goals when it comes to resolving the ticket? How will you keep the customer in the loop during the, the sort of treatment of the ticket? So it's, it's actually, and, and what kind of fields do you have to have in your system to uh, and on the tickets in order for, for you to measure all this, to see if you're actually hitting your targets when it comes to response time and, and uh, solution time. If we're, if we're talking uh, service, if we're talking sales, then it's what kind of meetings should you have with, with the customer during the sales process? What's the quality? So what kind of templates should you use? 
uh, what's the what's the uh, activity levels that your salespeople should have? Um, what's the size of the pipeline that you need to to have in order to meet your targets next quarter and next half year? So it's it's being conscious about what it means for your company to succeed when it comes to sales, service, and marketing, and and having the the processes in line and having the system to support it, and then for to be transparent when it comes to the metrics and the measurements. To correct if uh, if uh, you're not um, uh, hitting the targets or if you're not uh, hitting the the goals, uh, and to to improve. Yeah, and and maybe put some screens on the walls uh, and start visualizing how we're doing. Uh, what's the what is the trend? Are you trending down or trending up? Uh, because this is uh, as we spoke uh, earlier, this is about how good you are at at this moment. So. Uh, trends here are kind of vital to see if you're moving in the di right direction. Exactly. And, and one thing that I think a surprising number of companies do wrong is that they have the management team, they have one dashboard. Yeah. And then the sales uh, team has one and the salesperson has one. Same with the service. Yeah. Make sure that it's the same dashboard. That you, but you don't necessarily. If if you're an agent on the support desk, then you see your own dashboard, maybe your team. Uh, but as management, you see the whole team. May but make sure it's the same parameters and the same key metrics that you measure across the business, yeah. because otherwise you won't make sure that you go in the same direction. Yeah, you need to be really, really conscious about what you uh, just uh, said there, Camilla, because a little bit off there. Uh, people start hesitating, okay, is it really that number, is it really that high, really that low? Mm. Uh, because I, I'm seeing this a little bit different and then you're starting it. So really uh, keep in mind having the same measurement point and the same uh, criteria so that you don't miss out or, or get some uh, mistrust in, in the figures because uh, everyone should say, okay, this is the number and uh, okay. everyone sees it. I mean, good leaders, they, they talk to, uh, to their uh, people about uh, the why. Why do you have this job? What do you want to, how do you want to develop? Uh, what, uh, what makes this uh, job um, rewarding for you? A lot of these questions has to do with the same, but from a company. So why is your company here? Why, what do your company want to achieve? Who should your company be and to whom? Yeah. And how should you sort of win in your market, uh, in your market, the part of the market against competitors and, and uh, so forth? So it's a lot of big questions, but make sure that you discuss them well enough to, to make them very, um, very concrete. And measurable. Yeah. Yeah. And across departments. So it's yeah. not like a department goal and apartment uh, uh, strategy. It's more like a, who exactly. is we to whom and how are we going to get there? And you need to do that as one company with all the uh, departments. So everyone is- And one customer one journey. Back. Yeah. Yeah. Because that comes back to the customer journey. If you, if you miss, miss out on that and the sales have built a great new sales strategy and we are going to do this and nobody else knows about it. Okay, good luck. Mm. It's true. Yeah, so those are our very difficult <laughs> and very easy uh, tips on uh, what to do to align. <laughs> yeah. The challenge the is goal. it never stops. It yeah. never stops. It... That's true. So creating common goals, uh, uniting the teams and sharing those metrics, I think is very important. Yeah. And just the final, uh, final thing, because um, if you agree with me uh, that strategy eats uh, or culture, sorry, culture eats strategy for breakfast because culture is something that's in the backbone of, of every person. It's the intuitive knowledge of what to do, how to treat the customer. Uh, and that's more powerful than the plans of, uh, of the board or the C-suite or, uh, or whoever. Um, then you have to know that it starts with routines. It starts with knowing what to do and, uh, and having transparent systems and putting things into the system and measuring and then it has to do with, um, with uh, the way we, if we do that continuously, then we, we, uh, we, cha we change our behaviors. And when we change our behaviors over time, it becomes an attitude. 
and an attitude shared by many people, the same attitude, that's a culture. So to get to sort of the top level of, uh, of um, what I as a leader at least uh, value the highest, a good sales culture, a good customer culture, a good service culture, then you have to start with the routines and the systems at the bottom. But you have to do it knowingly. You have to be very aware of what it is you measure on and what you put into the systems. Totally agree. Yeah, great. That's great insights. So uh, we are actually coming to the end of the webinar. Um, so let's recap and talk about the impact uh, that sales and service alignment have on your customer base. So we know now that happy customers, the, that experience a great customer experience and a service that feel appreciated through the whole customer journey will be uh, loyal, but more than that, they will buy more and they will advocate for you and recruit references. And this is especially important in uh, with B2B um, where people look for references and uh, share opinions. And hopefully by investing in your long-term relationships with customers, you also get them to be your brand's ambassadors. Uh, fueling sustainable growth, like we showed in the slides before. And again, sustainable growth is all about making the most out of the relationships you build. And here's where your zero can support you with these goals. And of course, if you want to discuss your processes or um, the alignment and how to get there, um, then reach out to us in SuperOffice uh, or our partners. Paul, I'm guessing you will be happy to talk more about uh, the sales and service alignment as well. Anytime, just go. And then um, we are on LinkedIn if you want to continue the chat. And of course, reach out to us in any other channel as well. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.